Today in North Carolina, the Republican-controlled legislature approved a 12-week abortion ban that looks like it's going to become law. Up until last month, Republicans held majorities in both the State House and the Senate, but anything they passed could be vetoed by the Democratic Governor Roy Cooper. That is until a state representative named Trisha Cotham, who ran and won as a pro-choice Democrat in 2022, that's what she was elected as, in a sudden, startling, and at least partially unexplained move, flipped her party affiliation seemingly out of nowhere to become a Republican. She has said she felt too controlled by the Democratic Party. This is a woman who spoke movingly about her own abortion on the floor of the North Carolina State House in 2015 when she was arguing against abortion restrictions. She even co-sponsored a bill in January, four months ago, to codify abortion protections in her state. Yesterday, that same woman you see there cast the deciding vote in line with all other Republicans to approve a 12-week abortion ban and ensured that even if Governor Cooper vetoes the bill, which he has said he will, Republicans can override the veto and make the ban law. Jessica Valenti's work has been essential in tracking the story of abortion rights in the post royal era. She's the author of the newsletter Abortion Every Day, where she, today she published a story titled Texas is Fabricating Abortion Data. We'll talk about it in a second. And she joins me now. Um, Jess, I saw you also write about the North Carolina law saying it's even worse uh, than you think. Uh, what's your rundown, the basic takeaway of this law? Sure. They are trying very, very hard in North Carolina to make this bill come across as if it's a moderate bill. They're calling it things like common sense, uh, reasonable. One of the sponsors even said it's not an abortion ban. It's a pro-life plan because they know just how much Americans and voters in North Carolina don't want abortion to be restricted. I mean, so they're trying to make it seem like it's super moderate, super common sense, when in fact it's pretty old school. It's a very like old school punitive uh, abortion ban. It has mandates that make women look at ultrasounds, um, listen to fetal heartbeats while the doctor explains the, the ultrasound, like really sort of old school Republican stuff that is not moderate, not reasonable in the slightest. There's also this, um, this jumped out at me, and I don't know if you were the person, I think, who pulled this out or someone else did, but that the de definition of a woman, in, woman, a female human, whether or not she is an adult, which, of course, just um, lets you know that some of the people who will be forced to carry pregnancies to term will be children under this law. Yeah, they are. I mean, there's a lot of language in the bill that makes it clear that they understand the kind of suffering that this bill is going to cause, right? They're talking about children, though they're saying in a, in a roundabout way, they're talking about um, fetal abnormalities, and talking about uh, providing women with palliative uh, consultations for the newborns that they're going to be forced to carry. Really, really dark stuff, honestly. Um, they have to also explain in writing orally or provide to the women all the following information. These are women that are before yeah. the 12-week ban who, 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 who uh, do want to get an abortion. While there ri exists a risk of stillbirth with life-limiting anomalies, life-limiting anomalies have resulted in live births of infants with unpredictable and variable lengths of life. This is part of the sort of like state-sanctioned propaganda that has to be directed to every woman actually obtaining an abortion before the cutoff. Yeah. And they have different rules for medication abortion, which they're trying to sneak by, too. Um, they are saying it's a 12-week ban for medication abortion. It's a 10-week ban. And they have things in terms of, like, the terrible things that doctors are being forced to tell patients. Um, doctors are forced to tell patients, if you have a medication abortion, you may see the remains of your unborn child. That's their language. Again, really dark, really, really punitive. It's very, very cruel. Um, you had some reporting in your excellent substack today about Texas abortion data, where the, essentially you sort of uncovered just almost preposterously shoddy double counting and, fabri and sort of outright fabrication of data around complications due to abortion. Explain the story. So essentially, conservatives are super desperate right now to prove that abortion is unsafe. But we know that abortion is incredibly safe. And so because they don't have the science on their side, they've sort of decided to make up statistics using this reporting law. So they are forcing doctors in Texas. And the doctors that I've spoken to, by the way, are describing sobbing 
as they're filling out these forms, they are forcing doctors to fill out forms on a state website with their patient's private data, connecting their medical conditions to abortion complications, even when there is no connection whatsoever, right? They are doing anything that they can. And any doctor that this patient speaks to while they're at the hospital or while they're at their doctor's office has to report as well. And so one patient who may not even have a complication at all is all of a sudden responsible for three or four complication reports that they will then use in an annual um, abortion complication report to prove that abortion is dangerous. Yeah, I'm just reading from your reporting. Sue, a, a pseudonym for emergency medicine physician and other Texas doctors, have been required to submit patients' private medical information to state-run website without their knowledge or consent, adhering to a mandate that forces them to report women as suffering from abortion complications even when they're not. The rarely reported on section of Texas law lists 28 medical issues as abortion complications. Doctors are required to tell the state about any woman who developed one of these issues if she happens to have had an abortion at any point in her life, meaning they don't actually have to be connected to the abortion. They're used to pad these stats. Jessica Valenti, whose substack uh, is a vital during these times. Thanks so much for coming on.